Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 191 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our fifth, uh, 11th lesson in the series of 15 on the topic of probability. The problem for today, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's go take a look at it. We are told that we have events A and B. We are told we have events A and B which are mutually exclusive. The notion of mutually exclusive is something that we learned on day number 182 and day 190. Yesterday, yesterday we talked about two events being mutually exclusive. What does it mean when we say that two events are mutually exclusive? And now if you're not clear on it, make sure you watch those two videos, 182 and 190. We are further told that C and D are independent. Events C and D are independent, something that we learned on day number 181. We are told that the odds of events A or B happening is 60%, the odds of either C or D happening is 60% also. We are told that the odds of A happening is 20%, the odds of C happening is 50%. The question is, what are the odds that B might happen and what are the odds that D might happen? Let's, let's get going. What does it mean? What does it, let's start with something simple first. Let's first start with the C and D. C and D we are told, is uh, we are, we are told that events C and D are independent, which is a very simple thing to understand. If two events are independent, if the two events are independent, two events are said to be independent, if the odds of one happening, if the odds of one happening has nothing to do with the other. As if the odds of one happening has nothing to do with the other. If I toss a coin, what are the odds that I might get ahead? 50%. If I toss the coin one more time, what are the odds that on a second to toss I get a tail? Again 50%. If I roll it third time, what are the odds that I might get ahead a third time? Again, one out of two. Each time is 50%. The odds of one event has absolutely nothing to do with the other. Events are called independent. If you so, if you're working on a problem, and if I'm working on the same problem, we both of both of us are working on the same problem independently, independently, not together. Independently means that you're working in one room on the problem, I'm working in the other room. The odds of you being successful or not being successful has absolutely nothing to do with what I might do, and vice versa. Our odds of being successful or not successful has absolutely nothing to do with the success rate of the other. The events are independent. If I hit a target and you hit a target, my odds of hitting a target and your odds of hitting a target are not influenced by each other's performance. The events are independent. On the other hand, we are told. On the other hand, we are told that C and D. Uh, on the other hand, we are told that A and B are mutually exclusive. Now, this is a tricky part that people have trouble with. Mutually exclusive. What does it mean? for two events to be mutually exclusive. Now what we are going to discuss right now is all repetition. You understand it's all repetition from yesterday's lesson and day 182. Two events, two events are said to be mutually exclusive if, if one happens, if one happens then the other cannot. If one happens then the other cannot. For example, if I roll a dice, if I roll a dice, what are the odds that the number that I get is both, is both an even number and an odd number? What are the odds that if I roll a dice, that the number that I get is both an even number and an odd number. But that's just zero. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. Why is that? Why is that? Because if you tell me that the number that I just rolled was an even number, then it is impossible that that number also happens to be, that then it is impossible that I may have rolled also an odd number. If I roll a dice and I look at it and I realize it's an even number, then the odds that I may have also rolled an odd number on the same roll is zero. It's not possible. If, if I roll an even number, it rules out the possibility that I may have rolled an odd number. And if I had rolled the odd number, it makes it impossible. If one happens, then the other cannot. It makes it impossible that if I have rolled the odd number, if you tell me the number that I rolled is an odd number, it makes it impossible that I may have also rolled an even number on the same roll. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, let me give you another example where, where, where it is possible. It is possible for two events to take place together. Instead of talking about odd number, instead of talking about even number and odd number, let's talk about. I'm going to roll a dice. Are we going to roll a dice? What are the what are the, what are the odds that the number that I roll, number that I roll is an even number, and and what what are the possibility? The number that I roll is an even number and and a prime number. Here now, here it is not zero. It is not zero. 
just because I roll an even number, for example, for example, if I roll a dice and I tell you to look, take a look at it and tell me whether it's an even number or odd number, and you tell me you, you tell me that I just rolled an even number, does it make it impossible? Does it make it impossible that I may have also rolled a prime number? The answer is no. No, because maybe I rolled a two. If I roll a two, two is an even number, and two also is a prime number. So here, two events can take place together. The occurrence of one, occurrence of one event, does not rule out the other. Similarly, 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 let's do it the other way around now. If I roll a dice and I ask you to take a look at it and tell me whether it's a prime number or not, and you proudly tell me, yes, you did, you did roll a prime number now. You, you just, you just roll a prime number. Is it impossible now that I may have also on the same roll have rolled an even number? The answer is no. It's not impossible. It is not impossible because there is one number which happens to be both an even number and a prime number. Do you understand? So here, these two events are not mutually exclusive. When they are not mutually exclusive, the odds of this happening and that happening is not zero. When they are mutually exclusive, the odds of this happening and that happening is zero. Let's look at this, let's look at this concept in the, in, in the form of a Venn diagram. In, with, with, with a Venn diagram. This, this portion right here, even and odd, right here. Here is even, here is odd. Even and odd. As you can see, they have nothing in common. They have nothing in common. They do not share anything at all. They do not share anything at all. When, you, when you're dealing with something like this, these are called mutually exclusive. These are called mutually exclusive. Now let's look at even, let's look at even and prime. There are even numbers, here are prime numbers. Even numbers, here are prime numbers. Prime numbers, I may have rolled 2, 4, or 6. Prime numbers, I may have rolled 2, 3, and 5. As you can see, 2 appears in both. So they have a common area, 2 appears in the common area, 2 is going to appear in the common area, we're going to take it out from here, it's going to appear here. You see there's an overlapping area, which is why it is possible for this event and that event to take place at the same time, their probability is not zero. It is likely, it is quite likely that I may have rolled 2. Do you understand that? Let's take a look at one more example. Let me, let's, let's take a look at one or two more examples where two events are not going to be, not mutually exclusive. Okay, let's look at one, two more examples if you like. One or two more examples where the events are going to be not mutual. I'm just going to make it up. Let's say we have 100 students. I'm just going to make it up. Do you understand? 100 students, 80 of them are female. 80 of them are female and 75 of them study math. As you can see, if you add up 80 and 75, as you can see, if you add up 80 and 75, you're going to get a 5. 8 plus 7 is 15. You get 155. But we are told that out of this 100 students, we are told that out of this 100 students, 80 of these 100 students happen to be female, and 75 of these 100 students happen to be a math major. But that adds up to 155. We only have 100 students. What does it tell us? It tells us that this 55, this 55 is being double counted. This 55 is being double counted. Another way of saying the same thing is that there happen to be 55 people who, believe it or not, happen to be both female and a math measure. There we go. So we start out like this. We have 80 students that are female. 80 students that are female. And 75 students who are 75 students who are math major. 75 students who are math major and female. As we add up the two numbers, as we add up the two numbers, we realize it comes out to be 155. That's how, that, that's, that tells us that 55 are being counted twice. That 55 goes in the common area. As soon as we put the 55 in that common area, we have to go back and adjust this figure. Subtract 55 from here, it becomes 20. Subtract 55 from here, it becomes 25. And that tells us there are 20 people out of these 100 students. There are 20 people who happen to have happen to measure in math uh, math major, but are not female. In other words, there are 20 boys out of 100 who happen to be a math major out of these 100 students. It also tells us there are 25 females out of these 100 who happen to be obviously female, but they're not measuring in math. Do you understand? And then, of course, when you add them together you find that uh, there are 55 people 
55 out of this 100 people who happen to be both female and a math major. In other words, in other words, just because. So here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, make, I'm gonna put all, all of these people's names in a box. I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna pick one name at random. When I pick a name at random, it turns out to be, turns out that it's a female uh, person. Now, just because that person happens to be a female, just because you tell me that the first event is 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 occurrence of female, does it make it impossible? Just because she's a female, does it make it impossible that she couldn't possibly be a math major because she's a female? Of course not. The occurrence of one event, occurrence of one event, does not does not rule out the other. Here it does. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive. If one happens, the other cannot happen. That is not the case here. Similarly, if you happen to pick somebody who is a math major, if you happen to pick somebody at random who is a math major, does it make it impossible that that math major also happens to be a female? Of course not. Of course not. Two events can take place together. When this happens, we say that the events are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. Enough of the talk. Let's just solve the problem because as I told you before, this is all repetition. We have done it. I've done it twice already. I don't know why I had the urge to do it the third time. Day 182, 190. Let's do the problem. Let's simply do the problem because it's taking too long. So when two events, so we're going to start with, let's start with uh, mutually exclusive. When the two events are mutually exclusive, when, when mutually exclusive, then the odds of either A, uh, A uh, are the odds of A and B happening. When two events, when two events, uh, rather not A, it cannot be A, A and B, that was silly. The odds of A and B happening when they are mutually exclusive is zero, obviously. That's what we just talked about. They cannot both happen. They cannot both happen. When they are mutually exclusive, the odds of either A or B happening is simply the odds of A happening plus the odds of B happening. That's all it is. That's all simple it is. What are the odds that, that A or B might happen because of the fact that the event A has nothing to do with event B, they are mutually exclusive, I shouldn't have used the term nothing to do with each other. That's, I was using that, for, that language in the context of two events being independent. That's not what I meant. What I meant is that because they are mutually exclusive, which means that just because, which means that if one happens, the other cannot happen. They have nothing in common. They have no, no common area right here. There is event A, here is event B. A and B. So the probability of A happening or B happening, probability A happening or B happening, probability of A happening or B happening is simply the sum of the two. Is simply the sum of the two. A or B we are told is 60%, let's put it down as 6 over 10. Probability of A we are told is 20%. Oh, we don't have to make it such complicated, so let's make it simple. A or B, A or B is 60%. Probability of A is 20%. And therefore, the probability of B, which is what we're looking for here, probability of B right here, probability of B is simply going to be 40%. It's very simple, as you can see, it's very simple. It should take no more than 5 to 10 seconds. You simply have to understand what it means to be mutually exclusive. If the two events are mutually exclusive, then the odds of either A or B happening is simply the sum of the two odds. One more time, if, if, the, if, if events A and B are mutually exclusive, if A and B are mutually exclusive, which we are, we are told here, A and B are mutually exclusive. If they are mutually exclusive, then the odds of either A or B happening is simply the odds of A plus the odds of B. It is simply the odds of A, a or B happening is simply the sum of the R, two odds. That's it. Let's do the next problem, which has to do with C and D, which we are told they are independent. If we are told the two events are independent, that means that they are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. It is quite possible for both of them to take place at the same time. We looked at a couple of examples already. In that case, so now, we, we, now we're going to work on this problem here, probability of D here. In that case, if the two events are not mutually exclusive, which they are not, how do we know that they are C and D are not mutually exclusive? Because we are told that they are independent. If they are independent, that that's means that odds of one happening or not happening has absolutely nothing to do with each other. Nothing to do with each other. Obviously, that means they cannot be mutually exclusive because mutually exclusive means that if one happens, the other cannot happen. The occurrence of one depends on whether or not the other one has occurred. If the other one has occurred, then this one cannot occur. If you have already picked an odd number, you cannot have an even number at the same time. You follow me? So, so, so they, they cannot be independent. They, 
the, the, the happening of one has to do has, has a lot to do with whether or not the other one has happened. Here we are told that they are independent. That means they are not mutually exclusive. They're going to come across like this. C and D. And then C and D. And there's going to be a common area here. So in this case, when we talk about the odds of C or D, odds of C or D, it is going to be equal to the probability of C, probability of C happening, probability of C happening, which is this right here, probability of C happening, this is this circle right here, plus the probability of D happening, plus the probability of D happening. But as you can clearly see, that when we do that, we end up counting this area twice. We end up counting this area twice. Just like, just like we had the situation before where we ended up counting 55 twice and we had to go back and adjust it. This, this 55 is counted twice, uh, this, this area is counted twice, because it is double counted, we have to subtract it. Minus the odds of A and B. Minus the odds of A and B. That's it, that's, that's the equation we have to work with. All we have to do now is to plug in our numbers here. C or D we are told, C or D we are told is 60%, 60%, 6 out of 10. Probability of C we are told is 50%. Let's put it as 5 out of 10. Probability of D is what we are looking for. Let's call it, let's, that's our unknown. Minus the odds of A and B happening. When two events are independent, when the two events are independent, their odds, odds of A and B happening is simply the, pro, is simply the product of their odds. Something that we learned on day number 181. Which is why it's important that you do everything in sequence. In 181, the very first day of our probability lesson, we learned that when two events are independent, then the odds of A and B happening is simply the odds of A happening times the odds of B happening. Odds of A happening, we are told, is 20%. Is 20%, is it? No, sorry, we're not dealing with A and B. We're dealing with C and D. We're dealing with C and D. C and D. C and D. We're dealing with, we're looking for the probability of either C or D happening, not A or B. So probability of C times the probability of D. Probability of C, we are told, is 50%, which is half, times the probability of D, which we're calling the unknown. So here is our equation. One more time. Is 6 over 10 equals 5 over 10 plus x minus half an x. x minus half an x is simply half x. You bring the 5 over 10, 5 over 10 over this side, 6, 10 minus 5, 10 is going to be 110. 110 equals half an x. 110 equals half an x. You see x minus x minus half x. x minus half x. x minus half x is going to be going to half an x. And 610 minus 510 is going to be 110. Very good, that's it. If 1 over 10 equals 1 over 2x, then x equals, multiply both sides by 2 and you're done. Multiply both sides by 2, 2 is going to drop out and x equals 2 over 10. 2 over 10 or, or 20%. The answer is 20%. The odds of, odds of, odds of D happening is 20%. Where can we squeeze it? Let's put it here. So we just found out that the odds of D happening is 20%. The odds of, what was the other one that we found? Oh, must, must have been B because we have A here. The odds of B happening, odds of B happening was very simple. This is 20, this is 20%, odds of A or B is 60% and because they are mutually exclusive it's just 60 minus 20 which is 40%. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.